Hi there, Mark Spencer here from Ripple Training with a quick tip on how to use the Ripple Training RT split screen effect from the Ripple Tools collection for Final Cut Pro 10. Here we are once again in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm in the Titles browser in the Ripple Tools collection and we're looking at RT split screen. This creates a simple split screen effect, uh, but you can make it more interesting by combining it. So let's look at kind of how it works. So I've got a clip here that I want to add a split screen effect to because I've got a guy already set up on the right. I want to bring something in on the left. So I'm going to press X to mark the clip duration, select the split screen effect in the titles browser, press Q to make a connected clip, and then I'll select it. Now by default, it's already animated. So if we play through it, we can see a uh, drop zone appears at the top, right to the middle, and then goes away again at the end. If we go to the title inspector, we can see, first of all, there's some quick tips we can turn on to get information about how to use it, so that's worthwhile to refer to. I'll turn that back off. And these animate on and animate off checkboxes are on by default. If you didn't want it to animate for some reason, you could uncheck those, one or both, and then it wouldn't animate. But generally, you want it to animate. Now, source location, source refers to the image that we already have in here, basically the clip underneath the title effect. So the source location here is at the bottom. I don't really want to have that here. I want the source location at the right for this one. So we see him there. There we go. So now this slides in and we see the guy on the right. Now, he may not be positioned right. Depending on what you do, you may really want to change the uh, position and scale or even rotation of your source clip. And that's what you can do here. I've got source position, so I can uh, move him left or right or up and down. I can uh, scale him up. So let's scale him up, move him over a little bit, and even rotate if I wanted to. Uh, so we can set him up any way we want. And then we need some content to come in on the split screen. So what I'll do is I'll click on the drop zone well and then I will select this skateboarder to come in on the left-hand side. I'll click Apply Clip, and now we have a little animation where he comes out on the side. Now we can't see him, so we need to take care of that, and you may notice once you add content to a drop zone, you've lost the title inspector. You need to click off of the title and select it again to get it back. There we go. So just like we had controls to adjust the source, we have controls to address the drop zone. We can flip the drop zone if you just need to flip it over to the other side. That kind of almost works for us right there. Let me flip it back again. And we can also adjust the drop zone position, rotation, and scale. Now, you can do that in here. Anytime you have a drop zone in Final Cut Pro 10, you can also adjust it by double clicking on it. So I'll just double click on the drop zone. I'll set Command minus to zoom out a little bit. And you can see here, we can adjust the position of the drop zone we can adjust the scale. A little tricky to adjust the scale. You need to click and hold for a second. There we go. And I can move it over and adjust it that way. And when I'm done, I can click off of it. I'll press Shift Z to fit it back to the window. So you have the choice to do that either way. You can do it there by double clicking, do it in the viewer, or you can use these controls here. You can see that they're independent because I don't have any changes to these here. Uh, so you can do either way. Let's scale that up a little bit. So now this works a little bit better and we've got a simple little split animation. And it will stay on the screen as long as you want based on how much you trim this overall uh, title. Now, from here, there's a few more changes we can do. We can change the width of the bar between them, make it very skinny, disappear, or make it thicker. If you want to go thicker than 100, you can drag right in the value field itself if you really want to make it very thick. Uh, you can change the color to anything else that you want. I'm going to leave it as white. And then you can also make the bar soft, so it's a more soft transition. And here, like many times, if the slider doesn't go far enough for you, it only goes to 64, you can drag right on the value field to make it softer. I'm actually going to go back to its kind of standard uh, hard edge. So that's the basic idea. And as you saw from this little pop-up menu, you could choose uh, right or left or top or bottom. And now that we've scaled this thing, obviously, we need to reposition a little bit. Let's go back to right. But here's the really cool thing, I think, about this particular effect is um, you can stack them. So let's say we want this guy to come in from the left, and then we want something else to come in right about here. So what I'm going to do is uh, press I 
to set a, uh, a start point for a range, and automatically we get an end point at the end of this clip. So I'm going to select the split screen effect again, press Q again, to get another copy of it. And now, let's go ahead and play through. We've got the guy slides in there. Watch that for a second. And then we have another thing slide down. Now, in this case, I probably don't want it to slide down. I probably want it to slide up. So I'll change bottom to top. And then this slides up. I'll select the drop zone. And I'll throw in this uh, guy on the motorcycle, on the off-road bike here. And I'll deselect and reselect so we get our title inspector back. And this time, rather than double-clicking in the viewer to adjust the drop zone, I'll just go ahead and use the inspector to move that shot down so we can see him. And now we have uh, all three components in there. And we can animate. And you can stack these uh, as many as you want. You could have another one now come down and block those two out, and you can just keep going and really create some interesting effects by stacking these one on top of another. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to reframe something, you could keyframe this. Like, for instance, here it looks good, and here uh, you, you might want to change this guy. So we could go back to about here where we want him to change. I'll just do it from here. Um, I'll select him, and here's his position rotation uh, for him. I could actually do it in the title inspector as well for his source position. So I could set keyframe for source position, source scale, move ahead a little bit in time, and then scale him down, slide him over, and slide him up. And now what would happen is after that transition goes into place, you could have him move into place if you wanted to do that. So the point is that all of these parameters are keyframable and can be animated to change over time. Let's go ahead and throw in just one more to see how it works. I'll set, I'll hit I again, ripple split screen, Q. And now we've got another one coming in to block the top. And then, of course, they all animate back off. And because I've moved him, he's not going to be in the right position there, but you can have them all animate back off again. And let's go ahead and put, I don't know, let's put, uh, let's put her in this top spot. And deselect it and move this source position up a little bit. No, we don't want the source position. We want the drop zone position. There we go. Okay, so by stacking it, we create an interesting combination of split screen effects that can come onto or off the screen. So hope you found that useful. Hope you enjoy the split screen effect. Let me know if you have questions or problems. Support at rippletraining.com. My name is Mark Spencer. Thanks for watching.